happy Wednesday. Oh my gosh, I'm so young day. My name is Monica Henderson, and I am your host for Mean Life Motivation Live. And I'm excited because we are diving into our topic. This week, we are talking about connecting creatively. And we're going to talk about diving into deepening your love connections. Uh, today, to help me talk about it, uh, we are so excited um, because we have our lovely co-host, Andrea Gowards. That's right. Uh, she is your well life strategist. She is also um, motivation master trainer and the Mink Dean of Mink Life University. Hey, girl. Hey. Oh my gosh, I can't hear you. Um, and next we have uh, um, Peggy McCarthy, and she is a and owner of Headshots by Peggy. She is a headshot strategist. Yes, that's right, strategist. And she is a Mink Live motivation trainer on, on sorry, not or, the builder. Yay, Peggy! Woo, woo, woo! Hey! Yay, glad to be here on a Wednesday. Wednesday, right? It's so weird. And we have our special guest today, uh, but not a stranger to Mink Life Motivation. He is uh, uh, the founder and CEO of Bras Wellness Group, the marriage and premarital marital and parent coach, and a Mink Life motivated Mink Life motivation trainer. Oh my gosh, of the Life Calibrator, Eric Broswell. <laughs> we are ready to turn up. I'm so 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 excited. If we could just find what happened with Andrea, that would be great. I'm sure she's going to join us in a second. Uh, this is a live show and uh, live stuff happens, right? Um, so if you are watching this right now, please hit us with the hashtag live. And if you are watching the replay right now, hit us with the hashtag. But nevertheless, you are the fifth co-host on this show. And so we are going to dive into our conversations and we want you to chime in with us. I know Mason, you're probably not sure what are we doing here on a Monday? I mean, on a Wednesday? Uh, it's because see if you want to hang out with us on a Wednesday. So let's dive into our series of topics. Let's get motivated. Uh, and I'm sure uh, it will bring uh, our Andrea bring it back. And we're having technical difficulties with her. Um, with her, hey, uh, this is how you know, Can you guys hear me? Is she here? Oh, yes. okay, <laughs> it's like I see myself backstage being ridiculous. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I could be embarrassed, but I'm here, I've been here. I don't know what happened. The vagaries of TV, I mean, of video land, you know, okay. so live TV, right? Uh, so live with video. that, um, let's dive, right, let's dive into our conversation. Uh, uh, Alana is going to present us with our question. Here it comes. Here it comes. Uh, why is deepening the love connection relevant to a business owner? Now, we chose specifically this topic because Eric, my man, on, on with us today. And as a relationship, he should kick us off with this topic. What do you like to think? Gentlemen yeah. first. All right, okay. Eric. Thank Great you, lady. Lady. Thank you. So uh, the reason why love connections are uh, relevant to a business owner is because um, when we are happy in our relationships and we're fulfilled and we're even productive in our uh, loving connections and intimate relations, our romantic relationships, um, what it spills over actually into the business. Because uh, one of the things that it brings is that uh, it heightens your ability, or I should say your um, emotional um, intelligence, really, um, your ability to socially interact with people correctly. Because, you know, we all have a, a private life and a public life. And what you actually are practicing in 
private tends to come out in your skills and how you deal with people in public. And so uh, this is one of the reasons, because if you're learning empathy and listening well, listen deeply and generously, uh, and, and even being honest in, in the private life, um, it's going to be, it, it's, you're, you're not really going to have a challenge in doing that consistently in the business world because people need those same things. Now, you know, people need to feel cared for in, in the business realm. They need to feel that you, their, their needs are honored, respected, and cared about. And they also want you to be honest with them. You know, and they, they also just want you to be able to be consistent with those things, you know, and to listen to them deeply without judgment when they have a problem or when something, uh, a need comes up. Thanks, Eric. That was great. Um, I love when you share with us because I believe we've lost Monica. Okay. <laughs> I was like, first it was me. Now it's Monica. <laughs> and I can't see Andrea. Okay. Well, this Peggy, well, I can, can I hear see, you? I can see Andrea. So I guess, um, I guess Eric and I are just going to run the show today because we're the only consistent guests that <laughs> I can see Andrea. I just can't see Monica. So, you know what? Well, Peggy, why don't you jump in? Why is deepening love connections relevant to a business owner? Well, I think that's a really good question. And I know that, um, you know, your business is, especially entrepreneurs, your business consumes so much of your life. And when you are in the right relationship and you have that love and support, then it, it, it's, every single area of your life. It's not just your business. It's not just your family. It's not just your home life. It covers all the different areas and being, being in a supportive relationship and understanding and encouraging relationship gives you the confidence and the ability to step out and do things that you might not have done without that support. Yeah. All right. Andrea, are you, Yay, I can see you. Yay, I, I am here. And I am going to echo what you both said and then add a little bit of physiology from my point of view. <laughs> Why not? Yay. Um, so here's the deal. When we are connected and in a loving space, it is so good for our biology, everybody. Like it's so good for all the cells in your body to feel love and security and safety. And just like Peggy said, when you feel supported, those great endorphins, dopamine, oxytocin flood your body and make you feel kind of invincible. And what they also do, those great hormones, is that they, there's less cortisol, which is that stress hormone that is wrecking havoc with just about everybody these days in life. So having a, a good connection with a partner um, really affords you that, um, that other zhuzh. <laughs> Why did that word come to me? But really, it's, it's the, the thing you can't just quantify and say, I'm going to get this off the shelf and I'm going to go do this. But instead, it, it fills those cells in your body to make you a more creative and robust human, of course, business owner, and of course, partner to your significant other or you know however you prefer to the person that you're bestowing love to. It's a good thing to bestow love because it, it enables you to get all those good hormones too. So... That's my two cents on why a love connection is vital to all of us, and particularly the business owner. Like you said, Peggy, uh, we're alone a lot, and we are in the throes of creation and, you know, providing for others, maybe a team. So when we can feel good, we can then spread good to our clients and, of course, our support people. So... Oh my goodness, and I just got a message from our producer that I am now stuck here and no one else can join me. <laughs> oh, oh dear, Monica's stuck backstage in some... Un oh, Monica's back, yay! yay! We have been having so many technical 
issues. It's hilarious. But I, and so while we are figuring, while Alana is feverishly trying to figure out what's happening backstage, I wanted to share. Um, remember last we talked about uh, the, the self-care part, like how to kind of take care of yourself. Um, and, and we were talking about how you had three mental body, your spiritual body, uh, your emotional body, and body. Well, the thing of having a great romantic partner, why it's so important um, to you, you as a business owner is that it actually helps support and support you in all, all three of those bodies. Uh, like thing. Uh, so, so when we think about your mind and body, right, the person lo loving you allows you to be free to things that are important uh, in moving forward instead of needing that, that love. Uh, when you are uh, looking at your physical lusty part of the relationship allows your chemical reactions, just like Andrea was saying, to happen within the body, actually have those great in hormones and those endorphins and all those things. Uh, and so that works really well with your your own needs as a physical a physical being. And the last piece is and it's really about intimacy, right? So when you are dealing with coping with your feelings and having someone to directly connect those feelings to and feel those feelings to, when you're feeling insecure about your business, when you feel like a failure, that person should be the person who you're able to lean on to really get some support in your emotional body. So really, and when you're talking to a partner, that person is in partnership with helping you be the best you you can be. How's that? Did I come in and what everybody was saying? Yay! Definitely. I was listening. I just was stuck in in purgatory uh, <laughs> somewhere. So, so I love this topic. And again, I'm excited that we have one testosterone on the show to kind of help us kind of have this conversation about romantic partnership, uh, to hold it down for the men, the people who identify as men. Uh, so I really, really, really appreciate you, Eric, being here. Um, but then that I love you being here to have this conversation is because you're just a, um, a friend of Ming Wife Motivation, but you also really an amazing, um, an, an amazing first conversation with uh, in this entrepreneurial journey. And I know your journey is going to inspire everyone. So right now we are going to dive into helping you stay inspired. And this conversation with Eric Broswell is one that I'm so excited to kind of introduce you all to as Eric is not only a, a, a parenting and relationship coach, uh, but he is also a dynamic father, a, a husband to a fabulous, fierce woman who is a powerhouse in herself um, and also has given back to the community in, in as a pastor and just help people work through their emotions. And he's one of the few men that I know that is so incredibly in touch to his emotions. Uh, so we were so excited to have him in this conversation about romantic partnership because he kind of embodies what a lot of characteristics we look for um, in making partnership in our lives. And he can really impart some wisdom on how he got from where he was into this entrepreneurial journey. So Eric, please tell your story. Uh, thank you, Monica. So um, I would have to say uh, my uh, story, um, it began about, I would say about close, close to like 30 years ago. And, um, I never really uh, knew much about relationships. And, um, you know, my mom and dad, they've been married for like uh, 51 years. And this week actually is their anniversary. And, and it's like I wanted what they had. But living away from home, it's like I didn't understand the dynamics of relationships. Um, and I didn't really I, I mean, I went out and hung out with friends and stuff, you know, other girls and stuff, you know, but. Uh, when it came to relationships, romantic partnerships, you know, trying to get serious, I that just wasn't I, I didn't know what to do. So I never I'm not going to try and 
you know, uh, bring a mess to somebody. And I didn't want to receive a mess from anybody, <laughs> you know, so to speak. So, but, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was really, I remember, um, it was, it was kind of like a, uh, it was so funny. I was at the laundromat and it was like a, a divine a moment of inspiration where I just had this, this inspirational voice. And it said to me, you know, many people will take out three to four to five years to study for a career that will last them 20 to 30, uh, maybe even 40 years. But very few people will take out time to that same amount of time to study about love and relationships. And so uh, I took that as a challenge to go diving deep and studying about relationships. I would buy books about relationships and about marriage. I started in going to marriage works. And I was like 22, 20, about 23 years old and going to uh, workshops about marriage and, and relationships. And, uh, you know, and I even got, got to the point where I said, I need, I need a mentor. And so I, two people that were at my church at that time, they've been married for years and they're still married to this day. And, um, uh, I asked them to both uh, help me, mentor me, um, show me how to do this stuff right, because there's too many people around me that I see that's doing this stuff wrong. And <laughs> um, and so that's where my journey began. And throughout the years, I've always studied about it. And uh, I was uh, back a couple of years after that. I met my first wife uh, at that time and we we dated for about a year and we were engaged for a year, got married. And we had three children. And after 16 years of marriage, um, you know, she passed away. And so, uh, you know, I knew that that the, the, the I should say the, the call or the purpose for my life was still uh, to be a dad and a husband and to help, you know, to really learn more about relationships and help people as I learn more about relationships. And so, uh, a couple of years after that, um, I met uh, the woman that I'm married to today, Placida. Um, and she, when we started dating, she was just graduating from her master's program in human services and marriage and family therapy. And I was like really impressed with just some of the things I learned about her and how she really, you know, was fast, you know, was how family was really a priority to her, which it was to me. And it was like, hey, you got a minivan and I got a minivan. Let's get together. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, you know, we just really uh, hit it off when it came to talking about the importance of family, having so many things in common. And uh, we that when I met her, this is that's where it really kicked off in this thing of really uh, catapulting um, and starting a business and ministry uh, towards people uh, who, you know, singles and um, people who are in relationships uh, to help them in their lives, to help them to get into a position where they can uh, have a relationship and those who are in relationships that were uh, in need of some support or that were even struggling um, to have to support them and empower them with the skills and tools that they actually need to have relationships that, that they feel connected, they feel safe, they feel fulfilled and healthy in. I Can love I? your, oh, yeah, go ahead, please, Andrea. I just love, you've got a minivan, I've got a minivan, let's get together. I don't know. I was like, why can't I put that in the chat for it to go across the screen? <laughs> that was, I was like, wait, I don't know how to make this chat thing work. I, I got to put this in. We've got to like put that in quotes. It's it's just. So that was real for me. I, I, I you said it was so serious I know it's real. Kid. I, was like, <laughs> I said, oh, no, he didn't go there. That was, look, well, Eric, I love your story. But that just, that little tip that I didn't know. And it just, I was sitting over here giggling. Thank goodness my mic was closed. Because <laughs> I started snorting. It was hilarious. <laughs> it was and she had a Dodge Journey. She had a Dodge Journey. And I had a Chrysler. Oh, uh, it was a Chrysler. Uh, the Chrysler uh, minivans that they had. The, the, I'm trying to remember, but yeah, we had both had minivans. And I was like, yeah, we can do this. <laughs> yes, 
Okay, I'm sorry. I just, I had to share that. It was just too fun for me. And I was like, I can't make the chat work because I want the people that were watching to go. That was pretty funny. So anyway. Oh, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> A squirrel. Yeah, but Kelly, did you want to turn in? But yeah, um, I, I was saying is that, um, you know, I think um, a lot of times, many of us, we, we don't grow up. Uh, it, we're not privileged enough to grow up in a family and a household that, that we're actually taught the skills and given the tools to communicate, to do social interactions well, and to have healthy friendships and relationships. And so a lot of times we're coming out with a, a poor skill set or poor a, a poor or insufficient skill set and unless there's an interruption like an education a mentor or you just deciding to say hey i'm not going to do it this way i'm going to find out how i need to do it there has to be an interruption of the old skills for you to make way for the new skills Ooh. absolutely absolutely uh, peggy did you want to turn in? i was just going to agree um I, I think a lot of times um, we don't make room for the new skills. We, uh, sometimes we're in a bad situation and we, you know, have developed survival skills and, and we don't realize that, Hey, that's great. That helped us through that time, but we don't need that anymore. We need to lay that down and pick up a new healthier set of skills and tools and move forward. So I think that was, that's very important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, just watching people. And so one of the things, uh, you know, what's interesting is when I watch it, it's, it's just funny is because when you went growing up and and just even through my experience uh, in, in ministry and in business when I, and just in, per, in in other relationships, watching men when they make mistakes. And it's usually this is very common with men. So I got it. I'm not picking on men, but I'm just saying just calling you out, fellas, <laughs> you know, but. When they make mistakes in relationships and, and, they're, and they're not married yet, this is so common. We think the ring is going to make everything okay. We, you know, oh, I'll propose to her and it'll be okay. No, buddy. Uh, bring some honesty. Bring some empathy. Bring tons of honesty. Let me just say that. Bring tons of honesty about your past, your present, and your future. You know, uh, people need to know what they're working with. Because they need to feel some level of confidence and surety and certainty. And so that gives that to them. They need they need some, you know, deep listening without you having your plan about what you're going to say. Not listening so that you can know what to say, but listen so that you can connect. And that is something that, you know, you I'm going to save you the thousands of dollars. You can spend that, but this is what's needed more than that actual ring is the empathy, the honesty, the, the, the you being consistent so that they can say, hey, I trust you because of your consistency, what you, see, you actually do. And taking ownership. This is like, he's just taking it to church. This Sorry. is a big one, fellas, is that, man, ownership and responsibility for your poor choices and behaviors and mistakes. Don't justify it. Don't minimize it. Don't make excuses for it. Just say, hey, I screwed up. I did such and such. That was my bad. Boom. And if they want to hear it, then listen, here's the thing is that you'll have your day to explain it. But in that moment, that is not the time. <laughs> Sit down with your corner. No, we will hear your explanation. And, and, and here's the thing. I'm going to tell you something that I had not had to learn also in my own marriage early on is that, listen, what university did you go to? University of P. And then University of Penn is University of Placida. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we have to, we learn from our women and how our significant others and how we, we, we have to learn to give them what they need. That's what feels like love to them. Not what we yeah. think they need. You know, and so or what you need. You push it on someone else. Yeah. I, I agree. Like I just, I'm going to jump in there really quick because so you said so many things and we, he did. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, yeah. yeah. And another thing, um, one of the, what, so when you were talking about how that honesty and being consistent and showing up, up um, as an almost married woman, 
on this on this panel, I can attest, at least on, on my behalf, Kerry literally told me so much about his day that I knew that if something big happened, I would know it. And that helped me mm -hmm. trust him, right? The little, mm -hmm. littlest thing, but you don't have to tell me. He would be like, yeah, I had eight. I don't need to know how many grapes you, like that's way too much detail. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he was willing to kind of share that and he was willing to share like what he did wrong in his past relationship, willing to share like yes. where he has sucked in his career and where like to do something different and you know just really kind of that of like i yeah. can share my feelings with you they're safe with you me as a close emotional person i'm not the most emotional person to be able to say oh i can trust you with my feelings because you trust me with yours so yes absolutely um yeah. to step in and chime in on that particular point you had said uh peggy or, yeah. or andre did you guys have some some points that you wanted to jump in and be like uh-huh Amen. Well, I, 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 in the four square, anybody watching would have seen all the women's heads just bobbing <laughs> like you're at church. And it was like a funny moment to me. It was like, okay, he's just taking, we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Eric, that was just beautiful. I, I, I really appreciate how succinctly you really put some serious information. And I mean, really of connection, intimacy, emotional intelligence, it was all wrapped in there. Like there, you did, I don't think you missed anything. And if you did, I was too busy agreeing to find, to find, find the missing thing. So all I wanted, all I want to joke about here is for anybody who's, for everyone who's watching, Eric has been one of our favorite students and, me and mentees and people in our community because he speaks with this, you speak, not like you're not here, but he, uh, you speak with this directness and clarity that is just really resonant. And I can see why you're a beloved um, emotional healing coach person. So thank you for coming today and taking us to the emotional church. Uh, I really, I just, I, I don't know. It's, it's working on my dopamine. I'm feeling good. Everybody else? <laughs> Peggy, what about you? Well, I mean, honesty and trust is, I think, the foundation of everything. And, and it's both ways, you know. I mean, Eric pointed out that men need to be honest and trustworthy, and, and but women also. I mean, it's a two-way street. Yeah, it is. But you had to be so grown up. I, of course, that's a given. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will say that, you know, I, you know, Monica shared that, you know, Carrie is very open and honest about little things, so it makes you trust. I remember on one of the first dates I went on with Merrick, um, he laid his phone on the table open, you know, just in conversation. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's ever been on a date since cell phones existed know that that's like, that was a big sign. He wasn't like hiding it or texts weren't coming. In. Like it was such a, you know, just, and it wasn't anything, it was just, he naturally laid it down. He wasn't trying to make a point of it, even though it was like, oh, wow, he's not hiding anything. We're talking, we're getting mm -hmm. to know each other. And I think that was that was a, a firm building block on our foundation of our relationship is that from day one, it started off with honesty and trust. And and those are things that you can build on. You You can't build on you know, lies and sneaky and, you know, all this other thing, but you can build on honesty and trust because that's solid. And even if people mess up or things go wrong or, you know, whatever you can go back to, but what is the foundation? Like, you know, mm -hmm. then you can, you have that, that starting place, that firm foundation to build on. And it carries over, like I said before, into every area. It's not just your your personal life, but your business, your family, everything. And I think that's, I think those are the points that Eric has really driven, driven home hard. And, and I really appreciate that. This has been fun. Oh, wow. Thank you. Ladies. Oh yeah. Can I just so, share something about what she just said with that honesty piece? piece? Yeah. Um, you know, thank you for bringing that out, Peggy, because with honesty has a rhythm and a language to it. And what happens is like, it's almost like dancing, like a dance partner, you know, and when the honesty is like a, it's like food, it's like emotional food for the person on the receiving end. And when they stop getting that, it's like, hold on, what's up? And then they start looking for it. 
and because it's like we just interrupted the diet. We done, we interrupted the dance, the flow. And so now we're looking to get back on track. And so it's easy to see what little things like that, like laying down the cell phone, you know, um, and, and just being able, I, you know, my wife picks up my phone. I don't have no problem with it. She's on, she has all my passwords. If something happens to me, she knows what to do with, with passwords for whatever. See, there's, the, the, there's a language to honesty, but there's also a, a language and rhythm to dishonesty is what I was really wanting to get across. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, as you can tell, <laughs> our man uh, Eric here is, you know, primed and ready to have this conversation about romantic partnership, uh, which is exciting, um, which brings us to our next section about uh, really kind of connection and asking for help. And most of the time mm. when we are thinking about networking, we're thinking about how we can go and uh, put things on other people. But when we keep networking, it's about sometimes you need to ask for help. Um, and you need to actually reach out to people who can help you with a problem you're having. Um, and that can lend to you having the support you need, uh, which is why networking is so important. So we're gonna dive into our next question. And uh, I am really kind of excited to understand how does your personal, um, how does romantic partnership support your personal growth? Uh, and I will start this time with Peggy. You please chime in on that part. I think it's the exact same way it supports your business and everything else. When you have that trust and that love and that support, you are able to grow. I've had um, probably like many of you been in really bad relationships before. And when you're in a negative, unhealthy, um, even abusive relationship, uh, you tend to really go in and down and, you know, you, you, you feel like you're walking on eggshells. You, you don't know how to move because you're so concerned about um, not you know, stirring up trouble anywhere and not starting anything um, to the point where sometimes you're, you're concerned, do I say good morning or do I get breakfast or do I not? And, you know, you're, you're in that survival. But when you have a loving, strong, honest, caring, supportive relationship, you, you can't help but grow. You can't help but, you know, flourish because you're in an environment that, that's nourishing you're in an it just like if you don't feed your body the right things your body gets sick and and doesn't feel good but when you find out what your body needs and you start nourishing your body then you start feeling better physically the same thing with with the support you just can't help but to come out and go oh wow like i have somebody i have that confidence you have when you have someone supporting you, you can leap. You know that you got somebody that's got you and you can do whatever you want without fear because you're not alone and you've got that support. And you've got someone to bounce ideas off of. Um, I'm always bouncing ideas off of, of the people here in this room and Merrick there. I'm always like, what do you think about, you know, and, and that's how we grow. And it's, it's just, it's a fun place to be. Love it. Andrea? I love, of course, that Peggy started with, you know, it's how you feed something. And it's so true. Um, we, I touched on it a little bit earlier where I said, you know, when you give love, you are filling up someone else's cup, but you're also filling up your ability and capacity to have and be and do more, right? And at the same time, when you receive it, it's like you're being tended in a garden, like a the the analogy says when you put in the right inputs and so I love Eric used the analogy of it's a diet it's an ebb and flow like wind and shelter and I there were just so many great analogies and metaphors with that and so you know fueling your cup with the capacity to receive and give love does just what Peggy says it enables you to just flourish and when you flourish you then attract we're all about attracting those good things into our lives and and being a beacon of some kind of 
inspiration, source, hope. You know, when we can fill those shoes and be that person for another, because Monica even said, sometimes it's about asking for help. People love to be helpful. So that's a way for them to share another language of maybe love and expression towards you. And for the same thing for you, like we all love to give aid when someone comes to us, by and large, most of us, uh, because we can fulfill something that will make both parties feel good. So I love that this show today is all about making things feel good so we can grow and flourish. And it's a very emotional, enriching conversation. It has a lot of intelligence to it about tending the garden that is you as a romantic person. So I... It, it's in, it's essential to filling out who you are. So of course it's very important, and it it causes you to flourish in ways that are incalculable. You know, both in life and business. So, uh, what about you, Eric? Yeah, um, <clears throat> that's a that's a really loaded question there. Um, <laughs> Give us the the, the mini loaded <laughs> the loaded <laughs> answer. <laughs> I would say this is 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 that with. Uh, with personal growth, I, I think one of the things that your romantic partnership can teach you is uh, the thing of asking for help because it takes a lot of humility to actually um, to be able to uh, ask somebody for something, um, as well as trusting somebody to meet your need. And um, and and then I think also it gets back down to just even being honest about what you need. And communicating that, trusting that person enough to communicate it to them and have an expectation for them to um, to meet that need. I think it helps also in terms of when you see that done, you get to mirror the same thing. Um, with, pers with, 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 with our romantic relationships, I think it also shows us sometimes, uh, I'm saying this from my own life, is that it teaches us uh, where we need to have firmer boundaries and maybe also where we may need to loosen up some of our, our boundaries, which may not be boundaries. They may be walls, you know, and so it, it helps us to really learn how to take an assessment of ourselves, of how we're showing up, because when someone's uh, loving us and caring about us, it's a reflection of what we should actually be doing to them. So it's almost like it's almost like the ancient saying of love your neighbor as you love yourself, you know, and we get to do that when we are, when we're receiving love and we're fulfilled and it's meeting the need. Now we know instinctively that we need to do the same thing to somebody else. Yeah. I, so I really about um, romantic partnership and I think about movies. Movies, right, you, you you see a a character in a movie, and they're that power bent, right? And they have everything. They have um, they have the working out, the family is is working out. They have that romantic partnership, loving on them, and it's perfect. It really does become a part of the equation of what you consider as well, right? You consider a wealthy person someone who has it all, not just money, but they have love and they have uh, and they have um, they have every for them. And so um, just like how you guys were all saying, romantic partnership, when it is healthy, can also help you in building your own confidence in your business, right? It can help you build your own confidence in a lot of places. You think of uh, what does that power broker look like? That person is sexy. That person is you know, up and it's confident. That person shows up and they know what they want out of life and they're ready to get it. And when you are practicing, like Eric was saying, in your romantic partnerships, those attributes, right, of being sexy and being like, yes, you know, really proud of, and, and, and really being able to kind of ask for what you want in that relationship and get it, uh, it actually is a mirroring of what you would do in business. But here's the interesting part, um, which kind of brings us to um, what we're going to be talking about next. And that is what happens when you're in a bad relationship. And what does that look like, right? When you're in a bad relationship, you have less confidence, you're second guessing yourself, you're trying to figure out why things aren't working. And it really pulls you out of your power. And so your romantic partnership can easily be a power partnership. And 
Why they say power couples are because they feed into each other. They pour into each other's cup, like Andrea was saying earlier, right? And it makes you feel good, like Peggy was saying earlier. And so that directly brings us to our very next part, where we really want to kind of find out how uh, we are able to gain knowledge about how we can actually lean into this power partnership that we that's called romantic partnerships. Uh, so with that, I would for each of us to give just one tip to calibrate our love connection. So this time we'll start with Andrea. Andrea, what's your one tip to calibrate the love connections? Uh, it's a tip that has seemingly two parts. And the first part <laughs> is Monica you said something so powerful about you know romantic partnerships are power partners for the self right and the ultimate power partnership one has with oneself is the deepening of self I know that's like a la 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 it's a little <laughs> and so um knowing you well right knowing yourself well and your capacity to be that person Eric said, honest, emotionally intimate, giving and sharing is key to you receiving and having the deepening of a love connection. So you really start your calibration of your love connection with your connection to your emotional self and, and developing that emotional honesty so that you can give it and receive it. So for me, I know it's like not about the other, it's really about the self again and and leaning into um, all the things we've just talked about today at, and calibrating it for yourself so that you can be that person that can give and receive love from a very organic place from self. And so, you know, spend time with yourself be really honest right, about where you are, what you want to do and what you want to be in this world makes it easy when a person comes in is like, oh, I like that for you to share it. Same thing. It's like being comfortable in your skin. Then it makes you have that swagger you were talking about, Monica. So it really does come back to deepening that love affair with yourself so that you can love another. So that's my take on deepening how to calibrate your love connection. Love that. Love, love, love that. Um, uh, let's do Eric this time. Wow. That was, that, that was good. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I think the, uh, the only thing I can say, say is, um, making your loving connection a priority and, and what, you know, because when we're talking about a loving connection, it means, um, how, how you create a loving connection, I should say, is that you got to make space for it and be intentional about it. And it, it just really means this, that whatever you value, I'm going to value. Whatever you're interested in, I'm interested in. Whatever you care about, I'm going to care about. Um, and, and even if it's not my hobby, I'm going to make sure I make space for you to support you with that thing. And so that's what creates... Uh, that, that connection, that's how you calibrate it. Um, and when you find yourself getting off track and sometimes you have to pull back and say, hold on, what do they actually need? And then ask them, what do they need? Because maybe I'm not clear on what you need. So I want to get clear because you, what you need is important because this loving connection that we have is a, is a priority for me. Love it. Love, love, love it. Peggy? Well, echo both uh, of what both of the of them said. And I want to I want to use a word that Eric said, but I want to go a little different direction with it, and that is intention. Um, I think that the key would is having intention. And um, for example, Merrick and I, from the beginning, you know, we sat down and where 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 do we want our relationship to go? What do we want our relationship to look like? And that's something that that we intentionally, you know, talked about. And you know, where are we going? 
how does this work? How does this, how do our families merge together? How has all of this come together? And we did it with intention and we make pride priority every single day. The first thing we do when we wake up is we say affirmations with each other. And the last thing we do before we go to sleep is we say affirmations with each other. And that's something that we do intentionally. And if, if he's traveling with work, he'll call me and we'll, you know, we'll start our day together and we end our day together, no matter where we are, even if we're not in the same physical space, because having that intention keeps you on track. And then when, you know, something comes up or, you know, you get upset or your feelings hurt, you could, you can easily snap back to, you know, those, those intentions and you know where you're going and it's like, okay, so, so I got my feelings hurt. Big deal. I'm a human. How can you ever be with any, any one person that much time and never, you know, have a little pout or a little whatever. That doesn't mean that you're still not on the same road. So um, I love the, the word intention. I love all of that. That's so good. Oh when, my God, I love so that when I'm too. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, when, when, but it sounds like, like you guys are all kind of sharing. I'm going to sum it up in this way. When I win, we win. When you win, we win. If I'm winning and you're losing, we lose, right? That's if right. you're winning mm -hmm. and I'm losing, we lose. Uh, and that, that really is kind of the core of the ship. So if you're not thinking about partnership as a beam of success, right? Like I need us both to win in this scenario when you're having those conversations, there needs to be a we win in this solution. And sometimes we get too tiny in exchange for my really big win, right? Um, but we can't both lose. Um, we both need to win. So you wanna create both win-win situations in your relationship um, to calibrate those love connections and find those wins and people can feel confident and they can feel confident about how they feel about themselves. And you can feel confident about how you feel about mm -hmm. yourself. It then leans into uh, the, the the lusty part of it where you're like, hey, you're looking good over there. And that can lean into um, even more love and support. So uh, just remember that it's no such thing as uh, it's either you or me in your relationship, but it really is about when we win, we win. And that's the only equation that will work. So that is my one tip. Uh, I think we're talking about this topic, guys. I don't know. What do you think? No, it's good. Yes. Like really, so good. really good. Really good. Thanks, Sarah. Give you guys an opportunity to uh, share uh, just one really quick announcement about what's happening world. As this is time, it's time for our announcement. Uh, and so, Eric, can people? connect with you how can they stay in touch how can they learn from you <laughs> thank you monica um so if you can uh on face we're on facebook and uh our page uh braswell in this group uh you can definitely reach us through that and within braswell in this group um there's a also a group called uh transforming relationships and you can also reach us at uh Bras braswell in this group at gmail.com. So that's braswellnessgroup at gmail.com. Nice. Peggy, how can people get in from you and uh, really kind of stay connected? Well, I'm at headshotsbypeggy.com. I'm at headshotsbypeggy on all social media platforms, except for Clubhouse, where I am for Peggy. Um, and I am a headshot strategist. That's kind of my new thing that we're doing. Um, another place that you can find everything about me is linkapp.com slash Peggy. So come hang out. Nice. Yes. Uh, and I, well, I am opening a new Facebook group on Monday, the whatever next Monday is. Uh, and it's called, <laughs> of all things, Weight Loss the Right Way, Being in a Well Body. I am on a not singular crusade to redefine how people see themselves. And they always start with their weight. So the group is a communication center, 
hub on Facebook where I'm going to really break it down into all the things you hear here sometimes on the show and all the other things that really make you a human and not just what your weight is. But, you know, if, if pounds are something you'd like to release, I'm going to change your language about that there too, then this is the group to join. So I want you in a well body at any weight. But if you're in a well body, you'll be at the right weight. So stay tuned for that. We'll be dropping the links next week. And I'm really excited to host this new way of looking at wellness. Nice. All awesome. right. And on the Mink Life Motivation side, we have opened our brand new community. Uh, and that is the Mingle community online. So if you want to be a part of conversations just this, I would love for you to join in our Mingle community. To do that, you go to www.inklifemotivationlive and take a tour or take an orientation. Either one will get you. Meanplifemotivation.com uh, is going to be where you actually get um, sign up for one of those tours, learn more about our community and how you're part of an embrace of human beings just like this, amazing people who support each other through the journey of living healthy, wealthy, and fulfilled. Uh, and with that, we are really, really um, about to take off. But before I go, I want to leave you with quotes. Um, and this quote is, to whom you attach your life can either make or break you. So choose wisely. I want to definitely thank my co-host, and my guest as we are at the end of the show. Um, so thank you so much to uh, Alana is moving everything behind the scenes. Thank you so much to Andrea, Peggy and Eric for being here to help us craft this conversation about our partnerships. And remember that you have the power to activate the vision within. So, so excited to see all of you tune in next week on uh on wednesday, wednesday. at 9 a.m we'll be back here wednesday i say wednesday i said monday i'm it's going to take wednesday. me a while to wednesday watch party wednesday uh where you can actually take part in our next conversation which is about using leveraging humans as resources. Uh, so we're going to type and type, dive into our business topic next week. All right. You have a great week. Bye. 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 Bye.